Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. I'm Roger from uh, Off Grid Van Life and um, <coughs> last week we uh, we did a whole lot of filming of uh, a, uh, a review of some uh, shunts and some smart shunts and I decided uh, in this uh, lot of filming I'll take you through uh, a whole lot of uh, setup of uh, three particular shunts and what I want to do is actually compare their accuracy so let me take you through them and I'll, I'll do a close-up now so that you can see it. But basically, I start with a Victron smart shunt. This is a very well-known shunt in the industry. It's very accurate. Uh, this is what we use basically to measure others. And uh, it's uh, Bluetooth enabled. So basically, this is the unit and you connect to it via to your phone or your mobile device. From there, we go to this uh, Juntec shunt that we have been um, reviewing for Jintec, they sent it out to us for free. So so this is the uh, Jintec, uh, let's see, I've got a model here somewhere, a uh, model KG140F. So um, uh, as I said, we did a detailed review of this, but we're going to take you through uh, just how accurate it is and how it compares with this next shunt. So this is a also by Jintec, and this is a VAT, uh, 1200 so the 1200 I think means that it's capable of uh, 200 amps so I think this is a 300 amp the Victron I think is could even be 500 amp I can't remember but it's more than we can uh, handle on our batteries uh, this is about 300 amps as I as I recall and this one here is 200 amps so it has this little display so I'll take you through uh, more of this in detail. So we come from the battery. So this is a uh, DIY type battery. We actually did a, a we filmed the making of this battery, a very detailed guide on how to construct a battery and do it yourself. So that come we come down the uh, negative line down to the Victron smart shunt. So you can see it's a Bluetooth enabled. So this is the whole shunt. You just then need to connect your phone to the Bluetooth and run the app. And it's very, very simple, very accurate. The biggest disadvantage of this is that you always have to get your phone out, uh, connect to the device, uh, wait for it to synchronize, read it, and then you've got what you want. So we go from the Victron over here down to uh, this shunt. So this is a smart shunt as well. Uh, you can see the back of it if I turn it over you can see those are resistors there so it's got this uh, little cable here that connects it to its base unit and then the base unit has a temperature probe which I've just left loose out here and uh, it has this cable coming out which goes to the display unit one thing I don't like about this is that the plug comes out the back so you can't just mount it flush on something because you need this thing to come in. So they didn't give much thought to how you're going to actually mount this thing. You have to pretty much make a box and uh, mount it there. If you compare this with the original Gentech, see it comes out the bottom so you can actually mount this against something flat against something. So they didn't give much thought on how this gets mounted. So we come from the Juntec, uh, this is the KG140F, this one here, and we get to this VAT 1200. Uh, you can see it's the it's 200 because each of these little bars uh, take or carry sort of 50 amps. Um, so I've got this plugged in, but uh, normally you can run this, you can just plug it into USB and it runs wirelessly, uh, which is really great because you just plumb this in and then that's uh, wireless and uh, that's all that you really need. So that is the uh, rig that we're about to test. So from the Vectron Smart Shunt to the Juntec uh, KG140F to the uh, Juntec VAT 1200 and we're then going to a Guyandel 200 uh, 2000 watt inverter and to a good old uh, household fan. So that's what we're going to do this test with. So I have verified uh, that this is set at 280 amp hours and zeroed. So it's at 100% state of charge. 
This one is set, yeah, it's saying it's got 280 amp hours uh, remaining. And uh, yeah, full state of charge, 100% state of charge. And this one here, I've set also to 280 and it's got 100% state of charge. So they're all ready to go. Uh, temperatures are consistent. These both say 16 degrees exactly. So that's quite good that they agree with each other. Uh, the Victron doesn't have a temperature sensor as far as I'm aware. Uh, so uh, um, with these two, you can run um, relays and things that are temperature, but, you know, temperature cutoff and that sort of thing. So it's quite a handy feature with these. Cost wise, um, this one is in the region of 120 pounds. Uh, this one is normally 80 something pounds, but is on a special at 40, but it's been on a special for the better part of six months. So maybe that's its real price. Um, and this one here, as I recall, it's about 20, 30 pounds. Um, so let's see, uh, the cheapest and the most expensive. So let's get the inverter running. Inverter's on <coughs> and I'm going to put this fan to full blast. Everything is ramped up, 159.6 amps, uh, 163 amps. They are in series, so they might affect each other just a little bit, but I wouldn't expect by more than like half a percent, even, even if that, they shouldn't really affect each other. So um, I did notice uh, when we were looking at this, uh, when I was with Nigel that it was uh, reading slightly lower than the um, Victron. So this is closer to what I think the Victron will be reading. And this is less than the Victron. So I'm not sure about the accuracy of this KG140F. Let's see how good it is. And maybe it can be adjustable. But I, I get the impression this is not out of the box. This is not as accurate as the uh, Victron. Or it's not that accurate, period. So let's see, we're going to run this test for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and just see where these all land up to see which is the most accurate. Okay, folks, so we have finished the test and I am going to jump into looking at some pictures, um, basically screenshots and pictures of the actual devices to talk you through some of the, the results. Um, and I, we're doing it this way because I want to be able to show very clearly the results and point stuff out uh, using um, the mouse on the keyboard and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to jump straight in here. All right. So uh, if I just talk you through what we are looking at over here. So over here we have the the new Jintec uh, K whatever that number is. I wish they had a better better name for it than, than that uh, sequence of things but anyway so this is the new one and this is the one that we're most interested about so what is the comparison in terms of uh, the results from this compared to the Victron so um, our experience of the Victron has been that it's very positive that it's a very accurate uh, device um, counts very well I have heard some people say things that as time goes it gets a little bit more out of uh, out of sync and becomes a little bit inaccurate through time but we have not experienced that so maybe it's just that we've got a good one or a particular batch that's been very accurate but we kind of use our Victron as a benchmark um, and then this is the older uh, shunt as well we just uh, threw this in just to see how it compares as well and then obviously the Victron <coughs> uh, so this is a fairly elementary test uh, in the sense that it is really just showing the capacity that the shunt has measured through after a period of time. So after a certain amount of amp hours have been drawn from the battery, what does it say? So that we get an idea of the percentage that it's out essentially. And that's what we were most interested in for this test. We are going to do some additional tests as well uh, just for interest, which will be things like um, what happens if we uh, draw a certain amount and then swap the, shunt, the order of the shunts around and then carry on drawing and things like that. And we'll also be going in a bit more depth into some of these reviews and just uh, get a feel for how accurate these things are. Might even uh, get a fluke and, and, and do some accuracy testing on, in that regard. So if we jump in here and have a look, essentially we've got, uh, this is right as we push the button and turn the fan on. So still pretty much 100% state of charge on the battery. So we can see here on the new uh, Jintec, 
99%, 100% on the old Gentech, and then 99% on the Victron. Obviously, these percentages, I, I do usually caveat these to say that they are not 100% accurate regardless of what device you're looking at. So I recommend that on BMSs, on the daily BMS, and BMSs that you put onto some cells, lithium iron phosphate cells, um, and the same with these shunts. The state of charge measurement here, this percentage, it's a good indication, but it's not a true science. It's not going to be totally accurate. What I'm usually more interested in is how many amp hours has it has been consumed and what current is being drawn. So we can see here uh, on this uh, shunt here, amp hours remaining, 278.3 uh, amp hours. On the Victron, we've got uh, amp hours consumed, 2.2 uh, amp hours. So pretty close to those out by a tiny bit. And then if we look at this other one here, um, where is it? Uh, I think it's this one here, the discharged 1.59 amp hours. So it's slightly out. Um, but yeah, so that's the starting point. And then this is after we had been running the fan for probably an hour or so. And this uh, is a good point in that don't always take the state of charge on these devices as as the, the, the Bible, because sometimes they are not correct and it can also be affected. So in, in this particular example, we didn't actually look at the state of charge on here. We were more interested in the amp hours consumed and, and that measurement. So if we look at these here, we've got, so after sort of an hour-ish uh, of running the, or not quite an hour, but once we've drawn about 100 amp hours of uh, capacity from the battery, we have amp hours remaining 180.06, and then we had discharged 100.87 amp hours here. But then, if we look at the Victron, we've uh, consumed 96.2 amp hours. So these two, these two Jentex, are very close to within sort of one amp hour of each other. Uh, however, the Jentex, uh, sorry, the the Victron is then roughly sort of four percent difference four or five percent difference between the, the, the these two and the victron so that's an interesting comparison and and uh we're going to dive into this a little bit deeper to see whether this changes at all or sort of whether this is just fairly consistent in terms of is it just generally that when you uh, discharge the battery that the Victron and the Gentex are going to be sort of five or maybe that number is going to grow as you discharge more because obviously we've not uh, completely discharged the battery. So we're going to be doing additional tests like that. And, and obviously also if there are some tests that you are particularly interested in seeing us do, so whether that's to get a fluke and do some uh, real uh, sort of in-depth testing with that, then we're more than happy to do that. And equally, if there are additional tests that you would like it to see us do, then let us know, we'd love to do that. But yeah, so far, based on 100 amp hours uh, discharge from the battery in this test, it looks like they're about four to 5% difference between them. And I mean, in my opinion, that's not a huge uh, uh, discrepancy uh, because with these sort of things, I mean, it's not, it, whether you have, whether you've used 96 amp hours from your battery or 100 amp hours from your battery, your batteries, you've, you've used quite a chunk. So, I mean, my thing is when I'm using my van and, and my battery is getting low and I'm talking like under 50% and then gets to sort of the 30% mark and you're getting fairly close to your cutoff. If you uh, sort of have your cutoff of your low voltage disconnect, it's sort of roughly 15% or 10% of your state of charge of your battery. At that point, I'm always looking for to, to, to charge the battery up. I mean, it's gonna be a pretty extreme circumstance where I'm not wanting to start driving somewhere just to get some charge in from the, the uh, battery to battery charger, or I'm not looking to reposition the vehicle so I get better solar, or I'm not looking for an electric hookup at that point. So to me, having that slight variation is not the end of the world, um, but it's just interesting to see comparing the two. So yeah, that's uh, that quick test done. Hopefully that's been useful for you in some way. As I said, if you have any suggestions or anything you would particularly like to see us do, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, but otherwise, hopefully you've enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.